Hello and welcome to this new video where we will try to solve the following problem. The question says, consider an object of mass M moving on a semicircle path of radius R, capital R, from point A, which is on the negative x-axis, with x is minus capital R and y is zero, to the point B, which is on the positive side of the x-axis, x equal to capital R and y is equal to zero. You can see this, those two points from this graph. So this is point A on the negative x-axis while point B is on the right side of the, of the x-axis. Now, as the particle is moving, there's a force. So the question says, there is a force attracting the particle toward the point B. So we know now the direction of the force. It is from the location of the object of the particle, from the position of the particle going to point B. So it is along this vector. You can see the black vector. Also, we know some information about the magnitude of the force. So the question continues and says, and that's the force proportional to the distance of the particle from the point B. So the magnitude of the force is proportional to the length of this vector, the black vector. So now we have enough information regarding the direction of the force and its magnitude. And what is left is to find, okay, the last sentence, compute the work done by the force. So we need to find the work of the force as the particle travel from point A, the beginning to the end point B, along the semicircle path. Now there are different ways to solve any problem in general. So I'm gonna state two different ways to do that. And I will start with the first one. Now, in general, as just a first comment, students, when they see this kind of problems, they may be overwhelmed. They may think that this problem is a difficult one. In fact, it's not a difficult one. The only thing now to really uh, do this uh, nicely is to be able to write the force in mathematical form, in vector form. So that's the first task. Once we arrive the force correctly, then the rest of the problem is easy. So let's start with uh, thinking about writing the force as a vector. Now we already know information regarding the direction and the magnitude. Now if you look at this black vector here, that's the one we need, then we can relate it to two other vectors I draw also. The first one is the red one. Now the red vector is starting from the origin and it goes to the location of the particle. Well, this is the famous position vector that we denote by small r vector. Now the position vector is probably is the most famous vector that you will experience as a physics or math student. The other vector is the blue one which is a vector also starting from the origin and goes to the point B. Now, how can you relate the vector we need, which is the black one, in terms of the position vector, the red one and the blue one? Well, simply by tracing those three vectors, this is R, this is the black vector, and this is the vector R. So it's easy to see that the black vector is simply vector, the blue one, minus the red one. Now the blue one is magnitude r, that's the length of the vector, and it is along the x-axis, the positive x-axis. So we can write the blue vector as capital R, that's the radius of the cir circle, times r unit vector, minus the position vector small r. Now this will give us the the black vector. Now I multiply this by a constant to write the force as an equal notation. So force is equal a constant k, which is the proportionality constant, times the black vector, that's the one in the bracket. So now as we succeeded in writing the vector f, 
we can now proceed. The next thing is to calculate work. But what is work? Now work is defined to be this integral, which is called line integral. It's the integral of force dot product, scalar product, with another vector that's called the R vector. And this scalar product, you have to integrate it over a path, over the line, over the, the road that's taken by the particle. So now in this example, the particle is moving on a semicircle from the initial location, point A, to the final location of point B. Now, to do this integral, we already know what is the force, so we still need to find what is the R vector. Now, what is the meaning of the R vector? Now, as you look at the line or the curve or the path traveled by the particle, we will cut this path into very small segments. Each small infinitesimal segment, we'll call it dr. Now, dr is a vector. It has a magnitude and it has a direction. dr as a magnitude is a very small piece, infinitesimal piece of this path. And for the direction, that we will take it to be the tangential vector or direction at that location. So, for example, if the particle is here, so dr is along the tangent to the path. And if you want to be an, it's an, an easy way, we can write dr vector uh, in Cartesian coordinates as simply dx, the change, the infinitesimal change in x, dx, in the uh, i unit vector, plus the dy in the y direction, j unit vector. So we already know what is f and what is dr. We can now do dot product between both. But there's something we have to think about, because when we do dot dot product, then we will we will have to do dot the product between dr and the position vector r. So we need this quantity. So what is r vector dot dr vector? Now look at the shape. This is r vector. That's the red vector. And I can, you can see that the direction of the of the position is along the radius radial direction while dr is tangential to the path, which means that the two vectors are perpendicular. So this means r vector dot dr vector should be zero. The reason because the two vectors are perpendicular. So this will simplify things. So now we can take the force vector dot dr vector and do the dot product and you can see that only this piece of the force will contribute, and that's along the x direction, dot dr. So the answer will be simply k r vector r, the radius, r unit vector, dot product with dr. But dr, because this is only the x component we have here, so we can also only take the x component of dr. And in an easy way, you can find that the force is equal, the constant k, capital R, the radius, times dx. Now, finally, we have to integrate this from the first, from the beginning point, which has coordinate x minus r, to the final point, point b, which has x equal plus r. Now, this is an easy integration. K and R, capital R are constants. You can take them out. And the integration of dx is just x. From minus R to R, you will get 2R. And the answer is 2 times the constant K times the radius square. So this is the work done by the force. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are another, there's another method we can think of. And the second method, it relies on this observation. If you look at the force F in our problem, you can see this force is equal to a constant vector minus the position vector. So it's directly related to the position vector. That's remind you of the, of the spring force, for example, which has the same dependence. And what do we know about this force, which is a proportional to the position vector? It is a conservative force. So F is conservative. Now you can mathematically, you can prove it by taking the curl operator acting on the force F. And you can prove that the answer is zero 
which is a proof that the force is conservative. So now given that the force is conservative, we know that for a conservative force, the work is independent of the path taken. So no matter what path you take from point A to point B, the answer will be always the same. Because of this, we can now change the path and we can take a simpler path from A to B, to B directly, and that's along the diameter of the circle, which means we're gonna move along the x-axis only. So this will simplify lots of things. For example, dr will be only, ha will have only one component, that's dx i unit vector. The force also will simplify because our position vector will be, have only x component, and so things will become easier. And you can do, you can repeat the same procedure and you can prove you will get the same answer. So this is the second method. And I'm sure you can think of other methods to solve this problem. Note that there's all, there are always many ways to solve any problem in physics. And it's a good idea to try to solve any problem in at least two different ways. Thank you and we'll see you in a different video.